in this video, we are talking about the flyback converter, and we're going to look at how to calculate the critical inductance of a flyback converter. So to do that, we need to look at my favorite waveform, which is the current waveform of the inductor. In this case, it's the magnetizing inductor of the flyback converter. So we're going to plot that here. I, L, and M, because it's a coupled inductor. So let's look at these two phases first when the switch is on and when it is off. So you can see this green curve here is showing when it's on, the switch is on. So we are charging up the magnetizing inductance here and the output capacitor is supplying current to the load. We're only focusing on this magnetizing inductance. So because it's a constant voltage over an inductor, we're gonna see it linearly increasing. Because we're looking for the critical inductance, this is right at boundary conduction mode. So we're gonna see it increase from zero to some point here. It's gonna peak right when we turn the switch off at DT. And so we turn the switch off, this magnetizing current will keep flowing through the coupled inductor to our output here. From the coupled inductor, the inductor, magnetizing inductor's perspective, we will be decreasing at some linear rate down to zero again. To figure out what this critical inductance is, we only need to look at one of the phases because we're increasing linearly and decreasing back to zero. So we are going to look at just the first one because that circuit is simpler. We just have this switch closed and a constant voltage over the inductor. So let's look at that first. Let's just write the inductor equation. So V equals L di dt. Now we need to apply it to this first phase. So what's the voltage over this inductor? It's V in, so we have Vi. The inductor value, L, and I'm going to put a little m because it's the magnetizing inductance. And now we want to look at the change in current. Okay, so what is that going to be here? The average value here is going to be the average, I think I can put it here, I, M, I think I just wrote it as M before, the average magnetizing current. We figured that out in a previous video, so we're gonna, it's actually written here, but I'm just gonna write average I, M here, and because it's the critical value, we need to go to twice that, because it's going up and down, so the average value is gonna be that average magnetizing conductance. So we're gonna be two times that for the critical conductance. So boundary conduction mode. Then dt is just from zero to dt here, so that's just gonna be dt. All right, so first let's, we're gonna solve for this Lm. Actually, I'm gonna change that to critical because that's the value we're trying to find. So let's just write that Lm crit, just to be really clear. And we have Vi, so it's the input voltage. I'm gonna move this around, so I have dt, and then we're gonna be dividing by two, average I M here. This is the intermediate equation. If you know your average magnetizing inductance, seen from this side, this value, then you can plug it in here and you can get your critical inductance value here. From the previous video, which you should have watched, go watch it if you have not, we know that we can make, we can equate the average uh, inductance. I, I put LM here. I'm changing terms, let's be consistent. So we can simply take this value and plug it into here. What's the difference between these? Well, if you know your input current, you can usually, if you know the power of the load and you know the input voltage, you can figure out the input current. Or if you know the output current, you may know the output voltage and the resistor, and then you can solve for that. So let's just solve both of these to be complete. So we can take this value and plug it into this IM. So what will we get? LM critical is equal to input voltage DT divided by two. And now we're just gonna plug this guy into there. So I, the input current if you know it, this is divided by a D, so it's gonna end up with a squared here. So this is one of our final answers. Or if we wanna write it in terms of IO, 
we can plug this one in too. We're going to get VI and we're going to get D. I'm going to plug this in here so we're going to get 1 minus D. So put all these terms together and then T. That's in the numerator. In the denominator we still have this 2 and we're going to get an N, a little N, for the turns ratio of the coupled inductor and a I out. So this so these are the two equations that you can use to figure out the critical inductance of the flyback converter. So in summary, if we are designing our flyback converter and we want to figure out how much inductance, magnetizing inductance we need in our coupled inductor, then we need to figure out it based on these equations. So we would need to know, uh, well, there's a few options for you to figure it out. You need to know the input voltage, you need to know the duty ratio. You need to know your switching period. And you need to know, in this case, if you know your input current, you can find that directly using this equation. If you know your output current, then you can use this equation here. Here you would also need to know the turns ratio. So if you do power balance to the input current, it's a little bit fewer terms, but they will give you the same answer. And this would be your critical magnetizing inductance. If you pick this value, you would be exactly at boundary conduction mode like this. If you increase this value above the critical value, you will be in continuous conduction mode. If you pick a lower value than the critical inductance, you will be in discontinuous conduction mode. So enjoy designing your flyback converters with these equations.